Okay, when you choose a coconut, you want to see if there's any, see if we've got a little dark spot here, may have a little mold in there, maybe a little off water spot here, also have some mold in it. We try to find ones with the least possible spots on them. And then what we will do is try to crack it like an egg, like a hard boiled egg. Um, you don't want to crack it too fast, you want to break the shell around. Hopefully it'll pull away from the meat. It doesn't happen very often, but sometimes it does. But it does loosen it as we beat it like this. And a ball peen hammer is a pretty good hammer for this. Now when this cracks, there's water inside, so I've got to get it over a bowl. There we go, now we crack, so you have to get it over the bowl quickly. So just let the water run out. Okay, then we'll go back to cracking. And we want to get even cracks all over it so they're just not in half of it or part of it. The larger the, the larger the pieces, the harder it is to remove the meat from the shell. Okay, now so you can see how many places it's cracked all around. So, gloves, make sure you have leather gloves so you don't stab yourself. You've got coconut oil all over these gloves and oyster juice because that's what I've used these gloves for. So, now what you want to do is get oyster knife that's curved like this. You see at the end and it gets under between the shell and the meat and see how easily it pries out. So you have to do that. If you've got a large piece like this, break off what you can. Again, underneath, pry it up. Got a nice chunk there. Now you can always rinse because this gets some of the crust on it. So we can put it in the water there and that will clean it. See there's some dirt here. Not going to hurt you, but if you don't, don't want the, the dirt from the crust, I mean from the shell. Again, you pry it. Work it under. That's what is so great about this curved oyster knife for doing this. Just work it up as you work it in there. Move it around. Work it up. There we go again. See how nicely that came out. This one's a little bit tighter to the shell, but uh, again, I pried it loose. <clears throat> Here, dig in to the side again, pry it, pry it. You can move the blade down in there, pry it, see so we've got a nice large chunk. Do it again here. Now I suggest that you do about 10 to 15 coconuts. Take, you know, your day off Saturday or Sunday because this coconut cream will last in a refrigerator six about six weeks or more. So if you do a lot in one day every six weeks then you won't have to make it frequently. Just takes putting aside one day about every three weeks to do this. But you have to do enough of them to last that long. In each coconut, if you do it correctly, will give you at least 
eight ounces of coconut cream. Now most people will say, wait a minute, I've never gotten that. That's because they don't do it correctly. You've got to make sure your room in which you're juicing when we get to that state is 80 degrees. If it isn't, the uh, coconut cream stays in the fiber of the coconut and doesn't release. So, I mean, if it's like, say, down 72 degrees in your house when you're juicing, you'll lucky, be lucky if you get three ounces per coconut. If you get it up to 80 degrees, you're going to have a good eight ounces or more. And there are other things that I will show you that we're going to do with the coconut. Now you can remove the gloves. And then what we will do is we have to cut it up in chunks. So here I've rinsed them. As you can see, I'm rinsing the pieces in the coconut water. Now if there were some moldy spots on here, I would have to cut off the moldy spots with, like here we have a little discoloration under the skin, so that's a moldy spot. That will turn the coconut cream very sour quickly. Now what we want to do is cut small chunks off of this, because this is going to go into, this is probably the most time consuming right here, is cutting up a whole coconut like this into little bitty sections. You can also cut it like this. Little chunks. And there's two, about two and a third coconuts so far. And we finished this one. We'll have more. Okay, the next stage in this coconut cream making process is we're going to take these chunks of coconut and we're going to make them into a grated coconut. Make sure that this is down before you do anything. I didn't do that, so now, okay. And we'll put as much, and if you see one that has mold spot, definitely eliminate it because it will make the coconut cream go a little sour, and it'll just be more detoxifying. And I wouldn't put any more than uh, about uh, halfway into the, um, the halfway filled. And the best thing to do is pulsate it, not to grind it consistently, just to get the moving. Now we can, pull, now we can turn it on and leave it on until it grinds. See how this is grated now? It's going to go through the juicer much easier this way. It won't be so hard. And it won't be so taxing on your uh, gears in your juicer. Because you can easily overwork your gears in a juicer when you're cutting coconut or grinding it, juicing it. Again, I found another piece. You see, it has some mold on it. Again, we will pulsate first. You have to be very careful with these blades because they are very sharp and they will cut. The next step is we take the grated coconut 
and we put it in the juicer. Down. Now this takes a little bit of energy, push that down in there, and if you twist, it really helps. Twist, 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 twist. Now the pulp will come out the end, and the cream will come out in the center of this particular kind of juicer. Now I like this juicer the best, it has two gears in it. They are magnetic stainless steel and you don't have to worry about uh, the metal getting into the coconut cream and definitely don't have to worry about plastic. I don't like the augers that are plastic because then you get phthalates and other plastic chemicals into your coconut cream. Now it's about 80 degrees in this room, 79, 80 degrees. Perfect temperature. So we're going to see what we get out of these three coconuts. Well, we threw very little, probably about uh, half a cup of the coconut we lost from the mold parts. Now, sometimes the machine will jam. If that happens, you're going to have to unscrew this. Of course, it wouldn't be running like that. It will be stopped. You need to undo this and maybe unscrew these and let the pulp run out. And it will run out of here if it gets caught. Then we reinsert this. Well, did your finger clean out any coconut pulp that's sitting in there? And then this has only happened to me one time. And you just finger tight. Never put these any more than finger tight. If you do, it will jam and even crack the machine. Crack it in many places. It won't hurt the machine, but then you have a cracked looking machine. So always make sure that when you do each bout that your stick now they have a plastic one, I don't like plastic, so I use the wooden plunger. And make sure that you hear the, the uh, gears touching the wood before you add the next. Batch to juice. Again, twist, down and twist. Down and twist, twist. Now, this is obviously too tight, so I'm going to have to loosen it. There we go. Now it's moving easier. Just brush the coconut in the tray down into there so you can move it. Moving better. Now it's moving too fast so we'll tighten it a little bit more. We'll get drier that way and we'll get more coconut cream from the coconut itself. Now the coconut pulp is piling up here so I pull it to the side you feel it's getting warm. It's about probably 85 degrees and that's fine. I don't like the juicer where the uh, pulp is coming out to get hotter than about 96 degrees, 100 degrees at the very most. And it will be hotter when it comes out this end than it will here. And this is the crucial point of heat. See, if you twist like this, you don't have to push as hard. If you just push and push, you can wear yourself out. So just twist and push a little bit. Twist, push, push. See how easily that goes through. Now these were medium-sized coconuts. 
They weren't small and they certainly weren't large. You can find coconuts that are twice that size. So these should give about eight ounces each. Coconut cream. And sometimes I won't fill the shaft all the way up to the top. I'll fill it to about here. So it doesn't get compressed and packed in the shaft itself. Now, there's three coconuts. The pulp is filled up this bowl here. And we'll look at the measuring cup here. And what we have is, we have three cups. Just what I wanted for three coconuts. However, we can still get more out of this so we can run the pulp through one or two more times. We just have to make sure it doesn't get too hot. So what we do is we pour that into there. And again, we press down. Twist and twist. You see, there's still juice coming out of this. Oh, and if it's warm like it is in this, this room, you will get more and more juice. Now I'm going to tighten it a little bit so it gets even drier. Twist, turn, twist, turn. I'm going to tighten it all the way. You can always turn this off and just give the motor a relaxing. Now I do this not from the side. I'm doing this from the side to show you how it works. But when I'm doing the juicing myself, I want the motor. The, now let me show you. I'm going to show you with a meter, a gauge, okay, how high the EMF field is on this machine. See how high that is? See how far away you have to be from this machine? See, if I'm standing at the front of it, that's the best place to be. If you're here, see how much energy comes from the back side. So what I do is when I'm juicing, I juice this way. I juice with it away from me, and I juice like this. So the motor's back here, and as you can see, now, where I'm standing, there's almost no electromagnetic field. And here, a lot. Back here, on me, almost none. So that's where I want to be. Now this is a green star juicer, a green star gold, or it's called a green power gold, but it's all from the same line, the same mechanism, the two gear. The newest, the uh, green star elite, is better than any of these. That's the one I recommend you get. Now this pulp is getting about probably 95 degrees and it's just about as hot as I want it to get. Since I have an empty jar here, you can see now this is almost through and it's gone from this, this bowl to this bowl as far as consistency and amount of pulp. So we'll put this under here. Okay, now we got, this is pretty dry here, very dry. I could probably put it through one more time, but it's getting a little warm. I'd have to let this cool down to do that. And I can do that while I'm uh, putting this in jars. Now we have almost four cups here. So we almost have a quart out of three coconuts. That's exactly what I was expecting when your room is warm and the coconut pulp is warm enough. If the pulp is cold, even though 
the room is hot, it still will not juice properly. You can see here, four cups is here. So we almost have four cups of coconut cream. Now there are some ways you can preserve it. You could put a little lime juice in it. Lime juice is a bacterial inhibitor. Lime ju lemon juice is a bacterial encourager. That's why it's good to marinate foods with, uh, with lemon and preserve them with lime. However, I don't really like inhibiting bacterial growth in anything because 99% of digestion, at least 90% of digestion, is bacterial. And only about 10% or less is enzymatic and digestive juices. The digestive juices break down larger clumps of food into a liquid form or a smaller pulp form so that the bacteria can infiltrate the, the food and eat it. Now, the excrement and the secretions from the bacteria is our food. That's how it works. So we want bacteria. The medical profession has it all wrong. They're entirely motivated by the pharmaceutical industry and the pharmaceutical industry's entire intent is to make money. So if you're not taking medication, if you're well, you're not taking medication, they don't profit. So all of their therapies, their medications are all geared not to get you well, but to continue on medication. Just like cigarette addiction, coffee addiction, they want you drug addicted. So bacteria is your main focus in life. Bacteria, you have one human gene to every 150 bacterial genes in your digestive tract. 150 times what your human digestive system has of its own juice. So it's important. Bacteria is all important. The pharmaceutical industry, the medical profession has it backwards. They want you sick. We need bacteria. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to jar this so it preserves longer. You can see there's some air bubbles in there. You can just shake it as you pour it, and that'll move the air bubbles out of there. And put it almost to the top. When you're doing vegetable juice, you do want to put it all the way to the top. Now this won't make quite, because uh, these are actually 9 ounces rather than 8 ounces. So we're going to be just short of four full cups because, like I said, this is more than eight ounces each one. Okay, so here we've got three ounces. Of, we've got nine ounces in each of these, and this one will probably fill you know, a little bit more than halfway. Okay, now what we can do is we can juice some more. We'll take this, put this here, and then we'll put a lid on these and push this down, less air, preserve a little longer, again, push down as you're tightening it, less air. These are two piece lids and there we go so we have them jarred and ready for the refrigerator now as these get cold they will become hardened so you have to scoop it out it becomes very hard just like cold butter does now we'll just put the lid on here lightly until we juice some more so what we'll do is run this pulp through one more time as we were going to do the tightness because it's coming through very freely and easily so I want to dry it even more and make sure it's pressed tighter so I get more cream out of it and everything is cool this is cool and everything is cool so it's not going to cook anything it's not going to get it beyond uh, 100 degrees or 98 degrees I don't like coconut cream to get over 100 degrees and when you're doing this one day, you know, every five to six weeks, 
take your time and get as much as you can out of it. You see me doing here. If I can get another half a cup out of here, that's a whole day. Because that's what I eat. Well, it's anywhere from four to six tablespoons a day. I don't recommend everybody have that much because that's a lot of detoxification. Some people I only recommend maybe four tablespoons daily of coconut cream. But it's one of the most uh, cleansing of all of the fats that we have. And it's not oil, it's only about seven, eight percent oil. And the oils cause unruly detoxification. So this has the normal 78% oil. The rest is water-soluble fats. Most people don't know that there are water-soluble fats. But most fats in nature are water-soluble. Getting warm again, but not hot. So let's see what have we've got just from this one more pass through. This under there so it drip all over the table. Okay. Now out of that, we passed about two thirds of it through, and we got about two and a half more ounces, oh, almost three ounces. So if I want to fill this, then I can run this through again. But you get the idea, and then just put a lid on this and then in the refrigerator they go. Terrific. And it tastes good. Mm.